And it is our pleasure to welcome the great Kristen Kozlowski, former BYU basketball player, longtime analyst for BYU TV and ESPN Plus, a longtime colleague of ours. And Kristen is here in studio. It's good to see you. Thanks for having me. What is he, it? So a year can, and a half, and I finally get invited on. Oh, and we, we've tried. We've been, we've been practicing. Come we've been on, practicing. You too. Like, there's been a couple times. <laughs> I'm like, should we get Kristen on? Dave's like, we're not good enough yet. Yeah, we okay. had to so practice. So we needed to get to the show to a level more experience where we can like we could bring Kristen on and we can we, take some. Of the we stuff had to class she's it throw. up. We classed it up with Dilji Taylor yeah. and Gary Bohannon last, last week. Okay. Last week, right. and then we thought it was perfect. Yeah, I was to excited to hear that I could just wear. You know, a sweatpants, oh, yeah. and a sweatshirt. I, have, I haven't worn shoes on this show, <laughs> and for, like that's the thing I've never seen. People can see under. See right here. Oh yeah, there's your feet. I, I have feet. not. I have not worn shoes yet. Winter, yeah. summer, doesn't matter. I haven't I worn know. shoes on the show. It's, that's uh, the it's thing. something. It's a sight it. to see because I see it the whole time. It is a sight. Uh, yeah, hopefully sight not a smell. And here's the thing. <laughs> here's where like we have our we have our colleague Dave Nixon who does shows with us on all the time, but he doesn't grace our presence. Like he has to zoom in from Draper. Hey, and I wanted it's to like drive. Sometimes and, and we lower the show for some of the other guys. And Kristen's like, we said, could you come on the show? She says, yeah, of course. Do you want us to zoom you in? We know you live up in Draper. No, I'll be down. And so she drove her beast of a car down here. Yes, yeah. I did. Took up all three. I she has track. the <laughs> biggest car I've ever seen in my life, but she has a very she big, big kids. They're large children. By and the they way, still don't how fit. tall are your two oldest? Uh, they're both about six, seven, my yeah, sophomore six, and seven. senior. So. So they, they have to. Where so do they sit? I've, I've been replaced. I sit in the back seat when my husband drives. I sit in the back seat so that their legs can fit, you know, up front. They got more space, and they see, still. See, that's are, what a good mother would do. I know. You know, that's yeah. that's something. By the way, David Nixon was at the Super Bowl last night, tweeting out pictures. Yeah, and uh, he, he said lives he had, a different life than the rest of time. us. Said he had a good time. He's buying lunch. He came home with some lunch money, so we're Sweet. we're happy about that. This week, tomorrow night, uh, Central Florida's at BYU, as Blaine mentioned, six o'clock pregame on BYU TV. Tip at seven on ESPN Plus and BYU Radio. Then the Cougars go to Oklahoma State on Saturday. That's a noon Mountain Time, ESPN Plus and BYU Radio. Women's basketball. We're just setting this up to, to yeah. We're talking about up. all of this, but they're at fourteen and eleven, four and eight in the Big Twelve, which is. A lot better than they were a week ago. And Lauren Gustin earlier today announced the Big 12 Player of the Week mm -hmm. and teammate Amari Whiting, the Big 12 Freshman of the Week. Gustin combined for 44 points and 36 rebounds. 36 rebounds <laughs> over Baylor. What Cincinnati. in the world? That's nuts. Well, and Whiting had 12 points, seven and a half rebounds, and five assists. She, that was her average during those, those two wins. So, so in that game against Cincinnati, Gustin goes for 21 points and 20 boards. 20 boards in a college basketball game is... Ridiculous. That's, that's her seventh game of her career, 2020 game. It doesn't sound ridiculous when we're talking about her, but yeah. it sounds ridiculous for anybody else, right? Yeah. And, and I think that was kind of a little bit of a question mark around her coming into the season is can she pull the same numbers that we saw with the WCC, right? Because these teams are... Exactly. They have taller players. They have bigger, stronger bigs in the middle that she's going against. And she, let's face it, she's undersized at six foot one. Yeah. She's a center at six foot one and she's What's a typical still, center in, in the Big Twelve? Six four. Uh, I six, would five? say you're probably average, six four, maybe yeah. on the low end, six three, but Kansas got six five. You got a six seven player at, mm -hmm. at you know, you look at TCU six seven. Like they're they are tall and long and they have defended her at times by double teaming her, maybe playing her top side, playing in front of her, but they'll put two, three players on her to box her out, and she's still leading the nation for the second year in a row. It How is about, unbelievable. She's got she's averaging fifteen point four. The next closest is LSU star Angel Reese at twelve point three. And she gets and it all was the those pop. two last year neck and neck as well. It yeah. was Angel Reese and Lauren Gustin. And, and so in the Big Twelve, Gustin is uh dominating. Yes. And and has those twenty three double doubles also leading the country. Um it's fascinating. And and you called the the Baylor win. The other night when 18th ranked Baylor was here, it seemed like a couple of years ago, Baylor was the UConn. You know, they were right. the best of the best. Right. And they were heavily favorites in that one. Um, but the Cougars turned in their best performance of the year from start to finish. Yeah, and in that game, don't get me wrong, that Baylor team is so talented. Like, they have some legit athletic guards, some posts inside that are very physical, some All-American posts. And it looked like the Baylor Bears were just gassed. I don't know how much the elevation affected them, but BYU was pushing the ball at a pace that they wanted to. They were Every time that Amari Whiting gets that ball, she sets the tempo, whether it's offense or defense. But on the offensive side, she's pushing the pace, and you could just see that they it, it, the long haul was going to play in favor for BYU because they were playing at such a fanatic pace that Baylor couldn't keep up. 
we, we had Amari on the show um, with Amber, actually. We had two of yeah. them, which was really fun to have mm-hmm. him here in studio with us. Um, and you and I have talked um, on and off the air about Amari Whiting. You, you think she's the real deal. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, she's the key. Uh, Lauren Gustin, obviously, is your main piece. But if you don't have a point guard that can go against the guards in this conference and get the ball where it needs to go, set the offense up, and then just as equally as important, set the tone defensively. She's their ball hawk defensively. And every time you watch her, her job is to stop the ball at midcourt. So that's what she has to do because if she allows these guards to play downhill and get out in transition, it breaks apart the defense. It's too hard to recover at that point. And, and Amari's just so crucial to that. And no, she's not pulling numbers that's leading the nation like Lauren, but the tandem of those two – is pretty dynamic. Then you throw in this sharpshooting freshman, Kaylee Wolston, who's third in the country in, in three point percentage. Like, there's a lot of potential there, and, and especially when you got two true freshmen in the backcourt. As you've watched uh, um, Amari um, be a freshman that's had to start because of uh, Nani Fawatea bolted and, and there was no one left. Uh, Mackie Williams hurt her, got hurt. There's no other guards left, so the two kids go in, the two freshmen. Um, and you know what? She plays as a freshman sometimes. Absolutely. Which, uh, hey, that pass, that, that, that's never going to work. Or, or this drive, you, you need to pull it out, and, and, and you explain it as, as it's going on. But, but what have you seen from her that, that uh, gives you hope that by the time she is a junior and a senior, is the best guard in the Big 12? I just think her maturity throughout the season. And, and it's, if you go back to that very first game of the season, I don't know if you guys have heard this story, but... She went into halftime, they're down, and she had probably four or five turnovers. And Coach Whiting talks to the team and says, "We this is not how we're going to play. we got to take care of the basketball. we got to do a better job. we got to do, you know. And Amari comes out of the bathroom, just sobs to her mom and says, I, I, I'm struggling. I'm terrible right now. And Amber said, no, 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 we're not doing this right now. No, I don't have anybody else. you got to suck it up, and you got to go out and compete. Well, she turned it around and, and – had like five assists and one turnover and just was able to really come back and help them. But that just shows you like the expectation from her mom. She's still going to be mom off yeah. the court. Yeah, she doesn't call her mom. No. We, we, said, we said, what do you call her? She goes, Amber. <laughs> you call her Amber. Coach. Call her, her coach. coach. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we correct her. She calls her coach since she came on the show. Yeah, but I just thought, I thought that was so such a special moment, but it, it really shows you. Yeah. The relationship and confidence that Amber has in her and the need for her, right? Mm-hmm. And, and how important she is. She doesn't play like a true freshman, especially yeah. at this point in the season. Like her awareness and court vision and uh, the, the chemistry that she's created with the players, her and Kaylee have off the charts chemistry. They're roommates off the court. But when their shot clock's going down, we've seen this several times throughout the season, her head is up looking for Woolston to find her and try and take a shot or at least get a, a last and, second and those, shot. And those two, the fact that they're playing as freshmen together and they developed this chemistry, and it seems like they just turned a corner this last week, can that be the best guard tandem in the league before it's all said and done, like three years from oh, now? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's potential there for sure. You stay healthy. That's a big part of it. Um, and I think the pieces that they're going to have to fill after this year are going to be a big part of it. Yeah. But uh, what I've seen so far in Amari Whiting and Kaylee Woolston, Two of the best players that by the time they're done will have worn a BYU jersey. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun stuff. BYU's at UCF tomorrow, Tuesday, 4 o'clock Mountain Time on ESPN Plus and BYU Radio. And then a rematch with Kansas on Saturday at the Marriott Center for Mountain Time on ESPN Plus and BYU Radio. And you'll be back on that call. Kristen Kozlowski is with us on the Wise Guys. Played for the Cougars in 2004 and 2005 after transferring from Boise State. Scored 47 points in a game while playing at Viewmont High School up in Centerville, Utah. Do you what? remember that night? That's right, I do. Three quarters. Wasn't even four quarters. Who was it against? I told Northridge. Northridge? Yes, yes Northridge. That's where uh, Spencer Linton went to high school, so remind oh, them of that. Oh, wow. Well, today so I'm going to tell Spencer. What's that like? This. Were you just feeling it? 47. <laughs> I, I was, and I didn't shoot a lot of threes in high school, and not until I got to BYU, but um, I, I didn't even know till that night when Coach called me and said, you broke the state record. I should have kept you in for the fourth quarter because I didn't even play the fourth quarter. Oh, come on, Coach. Game. You could have been to 60. You got a 65. Hey, you know what? I know. You, somebody just asked this question because you just said, hey, come on, Coach. Yeah. Um, uh, so Mark Brown says, hey, we love watching Kristen uh, on BYU basketball broadcast. Have you ever thought about going into coaching or do you like the media side of the game better? Oh, yes. I, I do coach my kids. Believe it or not, <laughs> I've coached all of my boys 
in travel ball, AAU ball, every single one of them yeah. up until high school. And then you give, you give um, them the high school and course then, uh, high school. Then it gets a little bit more of this, you know, yeah, we're, well, we're button heads. Yeah. yeah. But, and you know, mom's on the bench. I coached Brody when I was pregnant with eight months, nine months pregnant with my youngest. Oh, wow. And it was actually me and Mike Wilson, Zach Wilson's father. Right. We were the coaches of their little bantam team. Let and, me ask you this. If you're, you're nine months pregnant and oh, you're out arguing a call with an official, did you always win I all always those calls? I always won, but oh, yeah. I didn't always Who's win rule with my against child. That? Yeah. <laughs> did, Bro, did Brody ever say, Mom, you don't know what you're talking about? No. My my boys are pretty receptive, and, and, you know, credit to my husband because he put the foot down and said, you will never disrespect your mom. Even if she's your coach, you treat her, you know. And so we always had a really good relationship, but I, I could always get to that point where I knew they needed to move on and be pushed by somebody else. But to your, to your question, I did want to coach right out of uh, college. And I interviewed for the Westminster job, the Dixie State job at the time, and those doors kind of closed, and then the door opened up at BYU TV, and so I just followed that path. What do you like most about uh, BYU TV? Broadcasting games. We've done it for uh, what feels like forever. What, what do you enjoy the most about well, it? Well, other than being to work ability to work with you two and you know oh. see you guys on a weekly basis um oh. i would say no she said other than <laughs> other than <laughs> yeah by I the do, way remember we're still on the show after I you're will, done so I we can clarify you. a lot of things i do enjoy the people <laughs> i work with and and you guys know like we've had so many good memories at the wcc tournaments and yeah. going to vegas together yeah. and, and all of that there's so and, much that's that goes on like i've always thought we should just put a like a glasses cam yeah, or something and record it for all of the conversations we have when we're not on the air yeah because that's when it really, the That'd game really the gets broken ticket. down. Because we don't pull, hold anything yeah. back and <laughs> Tyler's going off and you're, you know. Yes. Yeah. It's, but I do think uh, it's an allowed me as a mom to still be at home and be able to still keep my foot in the door and be a part of sports and be yeah. a part of BYU and, and not, you know, I've, I've watched how many coaches have to be in those meetings late night after a loss to like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and I'm calling a game and going home. And I absolutely love it because I'm still close to the teams. I still get to know all of these unique people, these coaches throughout the nation. And it's it's just a great opportunity. You guys are a great sports family. And it's not just basketball. Obviously, basketball is a big part of it. Brody's the best player in the state right now. Um, and, and signed with USC, heading off to USC. Your next oldest is a big-time football guy. He is. Yeah. So my Jace, who's a sophomore, is uh, right neck and neck with Brody right now in height. His challenge is putting on weight, especially in the football when he plays on the line. But mm -hmm. the uh, coach care up at Corner Canyon is shifting him to defensive end and maybe a little bit of tight end. And he's just he's got great hands and he's quick off the line. And, and so it's I was telling you before this, it's very interesting when they're passionate about something how early they're willing to wake themselves up. You know, when it comes to school, I'm mm -hmm. dragging him out of bed. Yeah. But when it comes to football workups, workouts, he's getting himself up. That's it, universal, yes. by the way. There, there has yeah. been some talk with, with Brody, um, because he's a phenomenal prospect. And, you know, whether or not he becomes an NBA prospect or not depends on how he develops, right? right. That's at everybody Absolutely. at this age, with the exception of a few crazy people like LeBron, right? But but Brody has the potential at six seven the way he handles the ball the way he shoots and if he continues to develop and with with all of his skills and his strength have it, could have a chance to play in the league the way he shoots but there's those have come to you and said he's an NFL tight end yeah yeah like, why had, why is he not playing football even, he, he he's like custom made yeah if you look at how broad his shoulders are and his ability to just his quickness at his size and his hands, I mean, it really crosses over. Right? That's what I love about athletes that play two sports because especially like a football basketball kid, the, the basketball really crosses over into the football world and especially with his situation and how big he is. But we've had several even coaches of this day after he signed with USC. Oh, you, you let me put pads on him and he's an <laughs> NFL guy, you know, yeah. and, and not that it's, oh, okay, well, this is your plan B. This is what we scouted out for you. But Brody's all in on basketball, and he has been since he's a little kid. But I think there's always the ability to transition over. And, you know, he's been blessed with great genetics, my husband's side, and everybody knows Glenn and playing in the NFL. And there's a network there for that, and as well as Uncle Mike, who played for the Dolphins. And um, right now he's just all in in basketball. But I do think there's that potential if he wanted it to export. You know, uh we saw a lot of hits in the Super Bowl last night. Yes. The NBA and college is physical in basketball. It's nothing like that. No. As a parent, I think you probably go, yeah, hey, basketball seems like it's yeah. just the, the right thing. That's the back and forth in our house, too, is whose sport is tougher, you know, because Jason Brody will go at it and yeah. say, no, you're not getting hit like I am. Did the family <laughs> gather and watch the Super Bowl yesterday? We did. So yeah. who, who, who are you guys rooting for? 
Well, I I was kind of pulling for the 49ers, honestly. Yeah. I just thought, well, let's have some change. Let's have it be interesting. I just love a good game. So the fact that it went into overtime, I thought was super rewarding. But my little, you know, my 10-year-old, who's an amazing quarterback, loves Patrick Mahomes. So he's pulling for Mahomes and he's wanting, you know. So each one kind of had a connection. And I think in this day and age with the younger kids, it's more of a player connection. Who am I connected to that I love to follow? Not necessarily, I'm, this is my favorite team at times, but what players am I watching? So Fred Warner was a big one. And right. yeah. just the Utah connections, that, the players that played at BYU that we were following a lot of those players. And Andy, we all follow Andy yep. and try to stay close to Andy. My granddaughters, every time Taylor Swift was on, oh, that's their favorite part, they probably. went crazy. They just went crazy. Yeah, so, but we didn't have a pro Taylor crowd in our Yeah, they weren't, <laughs> they weren't rooting for the Not Chiefs for because either. of Andy. They were rooting for the Chiefs because that's Taylor Swift's team. Yeah. And they made no bones about Think it. Think about how many households are that and way, my, too. And my two yeah. granddaughters that that don't watch football watched the whole game. Wow. That's what Taylor Swift... I, 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 I got to admit, she's doing some stuff for, for yeah. NFL football. Absolutely, she and is. And we, we did this over-under thing, little thing. My granddaughter Madison won. And the worst score was her dad, Kellen, who was a three-year starter at BYU at safety. Oh, my goodness. Madison won. She was only watching it for Taylor Swift. Yeah. I love it. Hey, let's shift to basketball and, and do our Cougar Board question of the week to get us going in these final few minutes with Kristen Kozlowski. Uh, if you're not familiar with Cougar Board, it's the largest online community of BYU fans. Thousands of posts daily. And this question comes from uh, Durandal, one of their insider subscribers. So we're going to give it to you. Uh, BYU was fortunate to ward off a late game rally against Kansas State. But these types of rallies by opponents in the second half seem to be a pattern. Why do you think BYU is giving up these scoring runs, and what do you think they can do to try and limit these going forward? Oh, that's a great question, especially taking on UCF tomorrow. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that one became very close late in the game as well, where mm -hmm. they went on a stretch. Uh, I, I do think that it can be a number of things, and it's, it's just based on game to game, depending on what runs. You know, we, we saw in that Kansas State game where BYU went on a six-minute run where they hadn't scored a field goal. Um, and sometimes they aren't as proficient at getting to the free throw line as I think we would like them to, but that's not a huge part of their game and what they do. But I, I think it can be a difference of rotations and maybe other players on the other team going off. We saw Kaluma go off in that Kansas State game, and then BYU couldn't quite respond to that or you know hit the shots. But when you really look at it, I've been impressed with BYU's ability to hold them off defensively and make enough stops to keep their lead. And then at the end, hit big time shots. And and this is what BYU does. They've got a team full of guys that'll hit big shots. Jackson Robinson hits that three late in the game. Spencer Johnson, the awareness is just dribble out the clock, and then they try to overplay him on that play, and he gets in there Goes for a the layup. Paint. So the, the maturity of this team, I think, it, it's the game of basketball is built on momentum, and you're going to see it with BYU. You're going to see it with every team. It it ebbs and flows throughout the course of the game. And this is what no different with BYU, but the maturity that we've seen in the experience that they have this year, I don't think they win some of those games where teams come back like they would this year compared to last year. We we talked about this on the air the other night and off the air. Um, first of all, Spencer Johnson, I love the fact that when we asked him, he said, well, yeah, when I dribbled through the paint, I noticed nobody was in the paint. Yeah. So when I came and turned around and I thought, nobody's in the paint. I'm just going to go, I'll just go right back in the paint and finish. And, and it was like parting of the Red Sea. So that's that experience you talk about. So he's dribbling out. He notices, what, why are they not guarding the interior? This is where I'm going to score. He knew that. Yeah. Right? But you're the one that brought this up on the air. And you said that sometimes to close out a game, you got to make free throws down the stretch because the other team's playing so aggressively defensively that they're going to foul you. Um, and so you're not getting shots off. You're getting fouled. So the way you have to score from the free throw line, and I don't know if you can remember the number because you told us on the air. It was what, four for 12. At the end. Four, BYU went four for 12 in the second half at the free throw line. Yeah, and you, yeah. you, you pointed that out, and I was like, well, there's, there's the in that game, and you in their game specific, in that game, it wasn't so much they couldn't make a shot, they were getting fouled. Yeah. But, Which is a good thing, right? That, that you're Because teams are going to overplay them. Right. That's the game plan. That's the scout. BYU's a three-point shooting team. Let's run them off the three. Let's make them make long twos, put the ball on the floor, make it make tough shots inside the perimeter. But if they're getting fouled, they're taking the contact. That's even better. And part of that's the inside game with Foose, right? Right. But I do think, to your point, it's like we got to hit more four, free throws. Four, and then I think we, we decided that three of those were the front end of one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the equivalent of going four of sixteen, right? Or maybe maybe not quite that four of fifteen. 
if it's, so all they have to do is make free. So is there something they could do differently in preparation that they can make more of those free throws down the stretch that are important? Well, I think it's all mental. By the time you get there and you're at this level, it's a mental part of the game. And yeah. sometimes that can be contagious where you see a teammate step up and they miss the front end of a one-on-one or another teammate steps up and then the other guy feels maybe just a little bit more pressure whether they acknowledge that or not or realize in their head, oh, well, it's getting tight. I, I got to knock this down. But BYU did enough early, which is what we talked about. Mm -hmm. they've, they've done enough early in the first half. Sometimes they don't start too strong, but the, kind of the, the gut of that first half, the middle of the first half, BYU did really good in terms of stretching out that lead, hitting shots, getting into a flow so that it carried them when they were in a scoring drought of that six minutes, no field goal. Yeah. And then they were able to close it out with their defense. And their defense and physicality coming into this year have been the biggest changes that I've seen, uh, uh, along with, I would say, that maturity and experience mm -hmm. with these guys. But you you have to be able to defend. And what they're doing with their defense, they're not, they're not going to be up pressuring you the whole game like we've seen with some of these teams, these tough defenses like Iowa State or Houston or – but this is a BYU team that's smart defensively, and they they play into those strengths, and they pack line it sometimes, and they get in those passing lanes or driving lanes, and just do a really good job not over gambling with who they have. Yeah, keep ES everything in front of them. ESPN has BYU as a lock for the big dance as of today. Central Florida at the Marriott Center tomorrow night. BYU football recruiting guru Jeff Hansen is going to join us in just a couple of moments. Blaine's going to hit you up with five good questions. Mm -hmm. Before we do that, Valentine's Day is coming up. We know Travis is listening or will Ooh. listen. Oh. Uh, what are your expectations from Travis? And didn't you guys meet on Valentine's Day 2005? Oh, it was close to Valentine's close Day. To about it? a week before that. So right yes. around. This yeah. is a special time yeah. for the Cosmo we, we know that, that Travis is, he's a very romantic guy. He's always thinking romantically. He is. It's, and it makes it more difficult in the chaos of our lives, right? Because yeah. we got a couple games on sure. Wednesday night and, you yeah. know. <laughs> we got life. Yeah. But uh, he's, he's already ahead of the game. Like, he's already laid out, hey, we're going to go to breakfast together after we get the kids off to school. We've got pedicures and manicures set up. We've got wow. massages set up. Good job, Travis. Yeah. So no, not now. I hope Brenda is still at yeah, the basketball game. Hopefully she's not listening. <laughs> no, because I think she's at Brad's. Travis class. has gone <laughs> next level. She cannot hear this nonsense. That is crazy. Okay, yeah. well, that's a good day for you. What are you trying to do it. here? Make us all look bad? Now this i got to up my game. Yeah. That's really. Remember, it is wow. a two-way street. I, I understand. Valentine's is a two-way so street. When that off, the Valentine's? second part of the street's off and left off. When does the When does the wife... Reciprocate for Valentine's Day. Uh, this is more of a husband needs to be, you know, like the flowers and the chocolates, right? Don't you feel like it's more of the yeah, husband needs yeah. to put more effort in on Valentine's Day? I don't Valentine's. think the wife does anything on Valentine's no, Day. No, they, they do. You know, make his favorite meal or his breakfast. Yeah, see, that's you know? good. What do you do it's for him way. on Father's Day? That's the question. Yeah, that's Father's it. Day is a big one, but it's a lot of my kids, you know, whatever yeah. dad wants, you help him out or you, there you go. take care of it. Okay. okay. All right, let's All go. Right. Five questions. Okay, five questions. Your favorite sports movie? Oh, gosh. I would probably have to say Hoosiers. That's the same as Marie Osmond. Yeah. That's a I classy that choice. Yep. Uh, favorite singer or band? Celine Dion, hands down. Really? Oh, wow. You didn't waste yeah. any time on that. No. Yeah, and all my kids know it. Okay. Yeah. What's your favorite song that she sings? Oh, I, I would have to go with Beauty and the Beast. Oh, yeah. Taylor's yeah, it's older. probably okay, a classic. A yeah. All right. Okay. Um, um, favorite breakfast cereal? Cereal. Um, honey Bunches of Oats. Okay. That's a good one. Are we writing these down? Yeah. Because yeah. I kind of keep track of them. I have a whole thing of them. We can use it again, Shif. We yeah. have okay. to sometimes. Taking um, a poll. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The worst cereal we've ever heard was Danny Ainge, plain shredded wheat without any. No sugar? No. It didn't feel like he had a lot of agency in that decision. No, I, I think, like cut up fruit or something no, on it? No, no. Oh I think goodness. I think this is on Michelle, actually, because okay. I think it is. So okay. Since right. the heart problems. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes so, sense. Yeah. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Plain shredded wheat, I would put like nine teaspoons of sugar on it. But yeah, anyhow. that's not that, good. It's frosted thing. mini wheats that's after that. Yeah. Get enough well, sugar then on why there. not just do Probably frosted worse. mini wheats? <laughs> <laughs> Captain Crunch right there. Oh, see, that's Travis' favorite. Yeah. But well, he doesn't see? love the berries. He no, likes no, the plain. Just like it straight. Yep. Yeah. I don't, need any, found, I don't need any decorations. He finally found another person that just likes that's them plain. That's Travis. Because the rest of us like And my kids are like, give me all your berries. Yeah. Yeah. I like the crunch berries. So there you go. I'm a cinnamon life guy. So, your favorite memory at BYU? Oh, favorite memory? Do I have to just pick one? Um, you can give us a couple. I would say the, the, the trips that you went on. Like, I, I think some of those vacation, well, I say vacation, but it was so fun with my teammates. And I'll pick one. We went to Alaska. We played in the Anchorage shootout out there at University of Alaska. 
Um, that was one of my better tournaments as a player, but Travis had a lot of fa- extended family when we went there. We get off the plane. They surround us with, with family that we've never met. They're probably third, yeah. fourth generation family. And they put on a huge luau at the church for us, fed everyone. It was this big, huge deal when we were there. So that's probably my favorite memory. That's pretty cool. Awesome. That's yeah. a spectacular right. place too, isn't it? So yeah. Well, we went in November, so it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Your favorite piece of advice you've ever given your children? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I would say remember who you are when nobody's watching. Mm. Yeah, and, and act as if someone is, but when nobody's watching, who are you truly? That's the great character reveal, isn't yeah. it? Who you yeah. Are. I like Very that. good. All right, Excellent. Friday morning, you're uh, co-hosting BYU Sports Nation. Yeah, is that correct? On I BYU am. TV. Who are you on with on Friday? I don't even know. I didn't know if it was Dave or something. No, now you're doing baseball. So. He's, he's doing baseball by himself. Yeah. By myself. So maybe Spencer or Jim. One, one of, of those two. And then uh, on the call Saturday. Yep. For and the then woman, you and I have a game a later one. in the month. Yeah. Uh, I think it's Houston when they come in. We'll be back together. And We've done a lot of studio stuff. Together. We've never yeah. done a game together. We haven't. Yeah. Well, we're, we're both color analysts, so yeah. one There's of us only has so to... many words. You know, we had Jimmer on. The three, Jimmer was <laughs> yes. with us. Yeah, And so I we know. had to find a place for where Jimmer could participate with us, as opposed to where us, how us could, could participate with yeah. Jimmer. And so it, it took a few minutes before we, when you add a third person in no a basketball game, is, you just. Hard. Yeah, because basketball is so much action carries it. Mm-hmm. In football, there's so much dead time you can do that. And there's no yeah. eye contact in basketball. Yeah. In, a, in a studio, like we were all working the studio show, uh, I can, you're going to an answer. I can give you a look that you know I'm going to ask you something exactly. next. In basketball, everyone's staring straight ahead and you just kind of try to get a feel for, and is I, Jimmer done? Is I Jimmer thought done that so I might start? have to tap him a couple times, you know, yeah. under the table, yeah, it's like, your turn or whatever. Did Kristen control Jimmer? <laughs> but, I thought she, she controlled him. I, she thought, had him. Uh, I thought he did a really good job, but he, anytime you put three on, it's difficult. And yeah. I thought Jimmer's just a brilliant mind when yeah. it comes to the game. And so you just analyze the game and you think of it that way and don't get too overworked. Because I think when you come into this initially, you know, that was his first live game. Yeah. I think you can get a little overwhelmed thinking, oh, well, what, what do I got to remember? What do I got to, you know, and just yeah. talk about the game, talk about the live game. Yeah. We'll have Jimmer on with us in some games as we swing back around yeah. for You know, yeah. I used to do play-by-play. By play. You did? So I did soccer, That's men's it. volleyball. So I did, I, yeah, I, really? I used to do play-by-play. Play. So nice. next year you and I will do a women's game together. Yeah, we'll see. We'll you, see. You, let's let him try play by play. <laughs> yeah. I can do play by play. I like my role. <laughs> hey, sometimes Dave just walks out and I have to do it. <laughs> so sometimes when I've just heard enough, Wait, I'm, I'm like, I'll see you after. Last yeah, question before you. Oh, okay, I, one I, more. I'm giving you a six question. It's a bonus question. This is um, you and Travis one on one in basketball, but you're not allowed Ooh. to take it in the paint. Oh, I'm winning hands down. Easy. Mm. Yeah, he's pretty physical. I mean, he is. Yeah, a that's what I'm saying. I, I just eliminated you remember the pain. Glenn, he right? cannot go into the PI. I know. You Glenn. remember Glenn? He's very physical. Now yeah. he wouldn't be with me, but uh, I can shoot. Out, and that so was... outside the paint, you, he has no chance. Yeah. Okay, I like yeah. it. I put a qualifier in there because I knew that Travis would just try to back her down and just yeah. power. We, we would get that question with Brody a lot, you know, and I, I could outshoot him up until a point, but not, both of us can't beat him at this point. So we, even the physicality. We yeah. had we had Amari and Amber in here. and Yeah. That was fun to ask them who this, who that. Well, although a lot of times you're like, we'd say, who's the best in the family? Oh, dad. Because he's a phenomenal shooter. He was yeah. a good shooter. Yeah, he's a great shooter. So, Hey, thanks for Absolutely. hanging out with us, and we'll see you in a few days. Thanks. See you Anytime. Down the thanks, Chris. The great yep. Kristen Kozlowski. See her on Friday on BYU Sports Nation, and on Saturday as BYU takes on Kansas on ESPN Plus and um, Big 12 Now. Uh and, and she's great. She's great at what she does. Amazing. She's also moonlights on ESPN and all that other stuff. Yep. We, we love her. Um, and Kristen, be safe driving that. I think it's a Humvee limo or she's something. She's safe it's driving gigantic. that. It's everyone else that needs a heads it's up. It's like a Humvee limo out there in the driveway. BYU kicks.